How are we doing everybody? It's Coach Alex from Maximize Potential coming at you with another great Mobility Monday. As many of you all know, we just kicked off our new month of Jack January and we've been getting pretty good into these arms and shoulders. And one thing that we always have to take into consideration is the more that we strengthen and use a specific muscle, the tighter it and its surrounding muscles will be. So today I'm going to be talking about how exactly to kick some of that neck soreness. But before we get into that, our cold weather gear is finally here. Stay bundled and stay warm while still getting your gains. We've got sweaters, we've got sweatpants, we've got beanies, and we've got a good assortment of hoodies. We've still got a handful of deals going on right now, so go ahead and head to the site and grab some stuff while you still can. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down in the comments below. Today I'm giving us the three best mobility combos that we can use for a stiff neck. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So before we get into anything, we have to understand why it's just that we're tight. Well, muscle tightness can be caused by a couple of different things. It can be caused by overuse, it can be caused by underuse, or it can be caused by prior injury. Now, depending on if this tightness is caused by underuse or overuse, the treatment is going to vary. With an overuse injury, we're more than likely dealing with some kind of injury that happened because of cumulative injury. Now, cumulative injury, for those of us who don't know, is just an injury that happens whenever we do specific repeated motions over and over again. This will put an overload on a specific muscle or joint and eventually cause pain and buildup of certain tissues. Eventually, this pain and the overgrowth of the tissues can actually cause certain muscular and mechanical imbalances, which then can cause injury and thus the cycle starts all the way back over. Now, an underuse injury, if you can imagine, is going to be an injury that's due to a muscle that's not necessarily conditioned for the things that we're trying to make it do. A really good example of this is going to be tech neck. Tech neck is very common for people who have occupations that are usually at a desk or if you're working at a computer for long periods of time. We have to remember that the body adapts and adjusts to exactly what we tell it to do. So if I'm sitting in a position like this throughout the majority of my day, the body is going to adapt and adjust and naturally tell us, okay, to make your life easier, we're going to make your chest muscles a lot tighter so this way they can pull those arms forward. And then we're going to overstretch those upper back muscles because obviously we're not using them. Now hearing that may give you a little bit of a hint of how that treatment is going to be a little bit different. With an underuse, we don't necessarily want to stretch these muscles. I like to compare a soft tissue very similar to elastic bands. So just like a rubber band, if you overstretch a rubber band, the last thing that you want to do is stretch it again. Now on the opposite side of things, with an overuse injury, we're actually going to want to stretch these muscles because we most likely have those muscles contracted more time than not. We always want to roll, stretch, and then strengthen. So right now throughout the month of July, we've been hitting these TRXs quite a bit. We've been doing a lot of face pulls. We're getting into a lot of this grip strength, a lot of this motion here in that upper back. A lot of time, like I said, with these overuse injuries, if we have a lot of tightness, if we have a lot of contractions in that upper back, a lot of the time, not only can those muscles get tight, but the surrounding areas can also get tight as well. So some of the stiffness may be migrating up into the neck. So with everything that I've mentioned now in mind, let's take it out to the gym and I'll show us exactly what we're gonna be getting into. Alrighty y'all, so as I mentioned, anytime that we get into any type of mobility, we always wanna start with some kind of myofascial release. So we're going to go ahead and start with a trap release. Now a trap release is going to focus primarily on that trapezius muscle that sits between the shoulder and the base of the neck here. Now how we're going to do that is we can get into a doorway. I'm going to use a rack here today and we're going to use a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball depending on how your tolerance is um, with that type of pressure. So the way that we're going to find the area that we want to get into, we're going to go about two finger widths or so just above the belly button. Now I'm going to take that lacrosse ball and place it on my doorway, place it on my rack, and I'm gonna lean over and get that trap pretty good in there. Now, I'm gonna roll around just slightly. Remember, anytime we get into myofascial, we don't wanna be on any bone. That's gonna be a really good way to give yourself a good bone bruise. So, staying away from that acromion process on the shoulder, so that point on the shoulder, and then trying not to come all the way up on the neck. We're focusing on that area in between. Now, we're rolling around the area. Always remember, seek and destroy. We're kinda Rolling around, we're searching for a couple of areas that may be a little bit tender. And when we do, we're going to find it, put a little bit of extra pressure, and sit here for about 20 to 30 seconds. You should feel that muscle kind of relax and feel that tenderness dissipate. Now, this arm is just going to sit here nice and relaxed. I should be pretty motionless with it, as we can see here. If we need, we can use this other hand, kind of stabilize this ball as we slowly roll around and find a couple of different spots. As I mentioned, each spot that we find, we're gonna sit here for about 20 to 30 seconds. So let's go ahead and find about three or four spots. We're gonna go about two minutes on each side. Remember, everything we do to one side, we gotta do to the other. So once you hit one, go ahead, swap it over to that other side. 
right, so the next one that we're going to be getting into is going to be a pec release. As I mentioned earlier, one of the most common reasons for having a tightness in the neck is going to be tight pec muscles. They're going to pull those shoulders forward, overstretch those upper back muscles, and end up causing some pain, some radiating tightness up into that neck. So we're going to go ahead and release the pecs. So again, lacrosse ball, tennis ball, doorway, rack, whatever we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pin this lacrosse ball between the chest and the rack or the wall, wherever we are. Now again, I kind of want to relax this arm, this affected side arm, until we find a tender spot. Now, again, I'm kind of guiding the ball with this opposite hand over here. Now, once we find a spot that's a bit tender, similar rules are going to apply. We're going to be here for about 20 to 30 seconds, but I want to add a little bit of motion to it here. So, taking my arm out into an anatomical position, my palm is facing straight forward. I'm going to come straight up like I'm waving, and this is gonna introduce a little bit of a stretch into that pec muscle. Now what we're doing is pinning down the muscle exactly on that knot, and then we're gonna stretch it out. This is called a pin and stretch, or a tack and stretch, some of you may heard. Again, we're gonna find a couple of different spots here. We wanna be here for about two minutes. This is a little bit of a larger muscle. So once we get about two minutes, we're gonna go ahead and swap it over to that opposite side. Remember, everything you do to one side, we gotta do to the other. All right, y'all. So this last bit of myofascial that we're going to be getting into is going to be a release of the suboccipitals. Now, if we break up that word, sub meaning below and occipital being just below that occiput. So if you take your hand and reach just behind your head, at the base of your head, at the base of your skull, you should feel a little bit of a rounding at the very low base of your skull. This is gonna be your occiput. Now, just below that are your, gonna be your suboccipitals. Now, those suboccipitals, a lot of the time, can get really tight, get really tender, and that is kind of what's gonna be causing some migraines, some tension headaches. So we're gonna go ahead and release that. Now, how we're gonna do that, we can use a lacrosse ball. I really like using a peanut. Now, with the peanut, ah, get away from me, fly. Now, this peanut is actually just two lacrosse balls that we tape together, uh, and the reason that I really like this is that we can actually go and put the spine right in between here and be able to roll both sides without worry of having to hit the bone itself. So, we're going to go ahead and take this right at the base of the skull. Now, remember, we don't want to be directly on any bone, so stay away from that occiput itself, but we can be on the muscles just underneath it. So, place it right on that wall behind you, place a little bit of pressure, and we should be here for about 20 to 30 seconds until we feel that release. Now this is going to be a little bit more pinpoint, we're not really going to be rolling it around all too too much. Once we hit about 30, 45 seconds or so, we can kind of stabilize and bring it down to a lower area. Now we're going to be able to hit a couple of different areas down the neck. We're going to start at the top and slowly migrate our way down. So after about 20 30 seconds in each slowly move it on down we should get about three or four different placements down the neck before we finish so give or take about two minutes here and we're going to go ahead and relax let's go ahead and get into a stretch all right so starting up at the top we're going to go ahead and get into a pec stretch now, same kind of thing, we can use a rack, we can use a doorway. Now, the way that we're gonna go ahead and get into this, I want about a 90 degree angle at the shoulder, I want about a 90 degree angle at the elbow. So, we're gonna go ahead and take that forearm and plant it firmly up against that doorway or that rack. Then, once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and rotate those hips, just moving forward slightly until we feel a good stretch pretty diffusely across the chest. Now, we're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. This is gonna be getting pretty good into that pec major. Now. What a lot of people tend to forget about is that we have a very important supporting muscle just underneath that, and that's gonna be the pec minor. Now, the pec minor runs diagonally at about a 45 degree angle across the chest. And when it comes to stretching, essentially all we're doing is taking the same angle of those muscles and stretching them in the opposite direction. So, the way that we're gonna go ahead and get into that pec minor after we get about 30, 45 seconds on this pec major, take that elbow up to about a 45 degree angle, and same kind of thing, lean into it. We should feel that good stretch diagonally across the chest here. Now, again, we're gonna hold this for about 30, 45 seconds or so, take about a minute, maybe two minutes or so per chest side, then we'll go ahead and swap it over to that other side. All right, so this next stretch that we're gonna be getting into is gonna be called a three-way neck stretch. Now, it's called a three-way neck stretch because we're gonna be stretching a couple of different muscles in the neck and surrounding areas. So, to start, the side that we want to stretch, we're gonna go ahead and take that hand and anchor it down. Now, if we're sitting on a chair, we can grab the bottom of the chair. If we're sitting on the ground, we can just go ahead and sit on top of the hand. So, once we have that arm nice and anchored down, 
we're gonna take this ear and we're gonna go to the opposite shoulder. So left ear to left shoulder. We should feel a pretty good stretch in that trap. Now remember, that trapezius we went and rolled just earlier here, and we're gonna hold this for about 30 seconds. Once we get about 30 seconds into here, slight change of direction, we're gonna take the nose and we're gonna look down into the armpit. Now, this is gonna be stretching the levator scap and some of those upper neck muscles up on in here. Again, once we hit about 30, maybe 45 seconds or so, we're gonna take that nose and we're gonna look up and away. Some of these muscles that we haven't talked about, these are called the scalenes, sternocleidomastoids. They're very important for neck support and whatnot. So up and away, if we want to really exaggerate the stretch, we can take this hand and we can place it just above the collarbone, anchoring down these front muscles even further. Again, we're going to take this for about 30 seconds in each position. Don't forget everything we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So go ahead and grab that opposite side, right ear to right shoulder. Should feel that pretty good in that trap. And we're going to repeat, nose down, about 30, 45 seconds. And again, nose up for about 30, 45 seconds. All right, y'all, so this last stretch that we're going to be getting into is going to be called a thread the needle. Now, this is going to be really good for stretching out those mid-back muscles as well as giving us some good T-spine mobility. So, we're going to go ahead and start in a quadruped position. Quadruped meaning our knees are going to go directly underneath our hips, our hands are going directly underneath our shoulders. Now, I want the eyes to stay directly on the hand that we're going to be moving here. Now, the reason for that, everywhere the eyes go, the head goes. Anywhere the head goes, the neck goes. A lot of people tend to forget that that neck is a very, obviously, important part of the spine, and we have to keep it all locked down at once. So, we're trying to move this T-spine all the way up and keep that low back nice and locked down. So, I'm gonna start with the right side. I'm keeping my hands, sorry, I'm keeping my eyes on my right hand as I come on up, and then as I thread my hand through. Now, I'm gonna reach as far as I can here, and my shoulder blades are gonna round across my rib cage. As I'm here, I should feel a pretty good stretch into that mid-back. Now, if I want to, I can take this opposite hand, and I'm gonna place it right at my low back. Now, this is what's gonna be comfortable for me, but y'all play around with a couple of different positions, see what's comfortable for you for this opposite hand. But we're gonna go ahead and sit here for about one minute while these mid-back muscles go ahead and stretch out. Remember, everything we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So, once we get about a minute, we'll get into that opposite side. Again, eyes locked onto that other hand, up, and thread the needle through. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, that's about all I got for us today. Hope we learned something new. Go ahead and try some of these out the next time that you've got a stiff neck. As I mentioned earlier, our cold weather gear is finally in stock, so go ahead and grab some while those deals are still on. Remember, y'all, this is always a conversation, so go ahead and leave a like, comment down below, share it with your friends. This really helps out a lot. But let me know what we learned, any questions that we may have, or suggestions for future content that you want to see. But other than that, I'm Coach Alex, y'all be good, drink some water, and I'll see y'all in the next one.